Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at geometric sequences. Now if you've been following along with the sequence videos I've been making, then you know that we just wrapped up with arithmetic sequences. Remember, when I introduced sequences to you guys, I told you there would be two that we would be focusing on. The first is arithmetic sequences where you're adding the same number every time to get that new term. Now for geometric sequences, it's a little different. Instead of adding, we now have to think about what are we multiplying by to get that new term. And you see that with our definition right here. We're gonna be multiplying by the same number every time to get that new number in the sequence. Now, geometric and arithmetic sequence have a lot of commonalities between them, but they also have a lot of differences as well. But like the arithmetic sequence, where we wanted to focus on the common difference and the zero term, right? Two big components that made our equation. For geometric sequences, we're also going to have two big components as well. In this video, we're going to focus on that first big component, and that is the common ratio. Just like with an arithmetic sequence where you had a common difference, right, the number you were adding by every single time, for geometric sequences, we have the common ratio. And that common ratio is that number, that same number that we're multiplying by every time as we move through that sequence. Now what I'd like to do is just like I did for the other video, is to give you two examples of a sequence side by side where we can find both common ratios so you can see how for two different examples, how it works. Because for us, in geometric sequences, the common ratio is very important to be able to find. So let's go ahead and start off with two different examples for a geometric sequence. I'm gonna start off with the geometric sequence of 2, 6, 18, 54, and then three dots at the end to show that that does go on forever. The other type of geometric sequence that I'd like to do is I'd like to do 16, 8, 4, 2, and then three dots after that as well. Now remember, just like with an arithmetic sequence, we wanted to figure out how this sequence was changing from one term to the next, that same idea is going to happen with geometric sequences. How are these two sequences here moving from left to right as we move through that sequence? The only difference now is we have to figure out what are we multiplying by. Now for this sequence on the left, again, you might be able to see that common ratio automatically without seeing any work. But for some of you, you might have a little trouble seeing that. And so I want to show you the right way to find out the common ratio if you're unable just to look at it and see it from just by, just by looking at it. Now the common ratio, we normally denote that by R. R standing for ratio. Now to find the common ratio, it's very, very similar to how we find the common difference. If you remember, back in the arithmetic sequence videos, common difference, you find that by taking one of the terms and you subtract it from the term before it, right? Think about that, you're doing the opposite operation. You're adding to get the new term, to get the difference, you subtract. Same idea here with geometric sequences. We're multiplying to get the new term, so if I wanna find the common ratio, all I have to do is divide two terms. So to do that, pick a term in your sequence. It doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick 18 here. So I pick 18 and I need to divide it by the term before it. So I'm taking 18 and I'm dividing it by the term before it, which is a six. And then we see that 18 divided by six gives us three. So three there is representing the common ratio. That is the number that we are multiplying by 
as we move through that sequence. Now, some of you might have been able to see that, right? Again, some of these sequences are easy to identify that common ratio. But some of you guys will come across each sequences that are not as easy to identify. So you always want to be sure that you are looking at this little formula here. Take one of the terms in the sequence, divide by the term before it. It'll always give you that common ratio. And I'll do it one more time just to show you. Let's say now instead of taking 18, I take the 6. Again, I'm going to divide 6 by the term before it, which is a 2. So I divide 6 by 2, and again, we still end up with 3 as our common ratio. That is the ratio that keeps appearing. It's common. So that's what we call here our common ratio. Let's go ahead and try the same thing now with this sequence on the right. Now, I wrote this sequence on the right for a reason, because I know some of you are looking at that sequence and you're thinking, oh, 16 to eight to four to two. Well, I know from going four to two, I have to divide by two, and then eight divided by two will give me four, and then 16 divided by two will give me eight. And what I want you to understand is for geometric sequences, we always have to think in terms of what are we multiplying by, not what are we dividing by. Now I agree that we are definitely dividing by two here. 16 divided by two gives you eight, eight divided by two gives you four, four divided by two gives you two. But we're not interested in what we're dividing by Instead, what we're interested in is what are we multiplying by? So I really need to make sure it gets in your brain that you understand that you have to find the common ratio. The common ratio is the number that you're multiplying by to get each term, okay? So make sure on a problem like this, you don't write that R equals two because you're gonna find out in a second that R does not equal two. So let's go ahead and follow that same logic we did on the left example. Let's pick two different terms and divide them both. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick eight here. So I take eight and again, divide it by the term before it, eight divided by 16. Now you can either leave it as a fraction or as a decimal. I'll do it both here for you. Here we see that eight divided by 16, if I leave that as a fraction, that will actually simplify to one half. Or if I want that as a decimal, one half can be written as 0 0.5. Now that right there, this here is the common ratio. That is the number that we're multiplying by. We talked about it earlier. They're definitely being divided by two. Another way to say divide by two is to say times by one half. And that's the operation here. That's the common ratio that's appearing as I move through this sequence. Let's do it one more time to make sure we really made sure we have that common ratio. Again, pick two terms, doesn't matter which ones. I'll go ahead and take Number, the number two here. So if I pick two, I gotta divide it by the term before it. That term before two is four. Again, two over four, that reduces to one half. And one half as a decimal is 0 0.5. So we see here that that common ratio is again one half or 0 0.5. Just very, very important that you switch your brains and you don't think about what are you dividing by here, instead, what are you multiplying by? And that's it. That's how you find the common ratio for any geometric sequence. Pick a term, divide it by the term before it. That will always give you the common ratio. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.